Good morning, Ken. Hey, Ken. No, you. We're all set. OK. okay. Uh, I have to read my little blurb. Hang on a minute. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Mass General Law Act, Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but effort, every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access to proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardships or despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst Town uh, Government website at www.amherstma.gov an audio or video recording transcript or other comp comp comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible for the meeting. And we go to, uh, I think the first uh, item is consideration of the minutes. Call to order, actually. Can you see my screen? Boy. Yeah, 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 I see it. Can you, wow. can, can, can you? Uh, wow. Um, I got bigger? Yeah. I'll do my best. <clears throat> Yeah, that didn't work. Oh. All right. There you go. There you go. That enough of me? All right. I call a little, a little bit more. Pull, pull your screen wider some way. Mm. There, there you go. go. Can you just stretch your screen out? I uh, can't actually. No, okay. No? okay. Uh, I call the meeting to order. And uh, gentlemen, have you had a chance to review the, the minutes of September uh, 9th, 2021? Yes. So move, we approve them. Okay. Uh, second, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, do we have any members of the public here, David? Not that I'm seeing anywhere. Just the no. five of us? Just, yes. Okay. So um, the meeting is yours, David. All right. Well, basically, we're just going to start out with the usual motor vehicle excise abatements. And as you can see, there's two groups there for the week of 8.23 to 8.27, and 9, 8 to 9, 10. So it's uh, first one's $3,398.86. And the second one is 6.2284. And uh, there's nothing out of the ordinary on the um, reasons. It's usual reasons for uh, incorrect garaging or people have traded their vehicles or total cars. Teresa, Teresa included the paperwork. Have gentlemen, have you had a chance to look at the paperwork? Yeah. Um, I think if you scroll down, you can see the, um, there they are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's take the first one. Um, what what week is that? What week was that? That's the 20th, the 24th, is it? That's the 23rd to 27th of August. Okay. I move to approve those uh, motor vehicle abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And the next one is uh, September 8th to September 10th. All right. Is it, and that has a total of uh, $622.84, I believe. Correct. All right. Uh, that, uh, okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving those motor vehicle abatements, please say aye. 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 Right, and now uh, the general purpose of this meeting is we're going to jump straight into giving an overview of what we're going to be presenting on the 4th to the um, uh, council. Now, I want to say before we go along that the numbers for the, the tax rate are going to change slightly. Uh, we were using estimates, so I can get this out to you, and I used $21.32 but we believe it's going to be closer to $21.27. So it's going to be a bit less. And I will adjust that before we get to the hearing so they can see it all on the, on the um, spreadsheet, on the um, file. So well, that's, an plat, of, that's an increase on the rate of how much? How much? That's not an increase. It's a reduction of 55 cents. Mm. Oh, okay. Wow. Which is actually a good question. And the reason... Uh, I should. I would want to remind them that we have raised values this year on the residential portions, mm -hmm. uh, and even at that, the, the residential market is still far outstripping the assessments based yeah. on what we're seeing in 2021. So we'll probably have to raise them again yet, yet again next year. What percentage did they get raised overall? 
point eight percent, Ken. That was Ken, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the reason for it was obviously the market, and the other reason is that I had hoped not to do anything until twenty twenty two, but um, I don't want to see a, a double digit and raising FY twenty two if we or twenty three if we can avoid it. It's just an awful big jump. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the things we'll be talking about when we get uh, to the meeting. I will mention it. It's not on the it's not on the screen, but we'll mention it so they're aware of why we did it and why mm -hmm. the tax rate has dropped. Mm -hmm. We didn't do commercial, and the reason for that was well, we haven't we haven't had many commercial complaints, but we see a lot more vacancy at the moment in town. So we've got to think that the COVID has had some sort of an impact. So rather than trying to deal with abatements, we're hoping that the fact that we don't change the values and that the tax rate is lower, and so therefore the commercial properties are paying less tax, that um, it'll uh, mitigate any abatements we have for next year. Mm -hmm. So that's the logic behind it so far. Mm -hmm. So did, did we have many abatements this year? We didn't for commercial, did we? Well, no, not for commercial. We only had three or four. Okay. Uh, I think we had about 40 for the um, residential. Yeah. But really the classification hearing is usually the same as usual. There's the load in, as you can see from the public hearing. We're asking them for the tax policy options. Then the overview of what's happening, how the assessor values are determined, which is probably where I'll mention the increase in value. Then we have to have the public hearing and all the usual. Uh, this is really the same as last year. And then we're going to talk about what exempts, the um, uh, way they have to do it every year and the law that we have. Now, we might have a few questions there because I think we've uh, got some new councillors or people who may be councillors will probably be listening in. So we'll explain that a little bit if, if they ask, okay? What time is this Zoom? 6.30, Ken. Okay. And then there's a tax classification hearing that was passed in 1978 and the four classes of property and the definitions for each. I will spend more time with it for them, by the way. Oh, this is all the same from last year, so. Yeah. You know, there, there seems to be some confusion in town, I've noticed already, about whether you can tax um, apartment buildings differently than than res than. Um, one family home so that may come up um well we yeah that, that's easy that's a we do tax them differently we'll talk to them about that yeah okay and then you can just see the breakdown of um the distribution of the valuations and obviously we've got a huge percentage that's uh residential so is that a, apartment is that a black color is that black yep. okay. black or brown i'm not sure okay well maybe red no, it's not red. It's oh, black. no, it's not red. No. Hey, I'm colorblind. Stop picking on me. <laughs> I've never seen anybody pick black for a pie chart, but that's okay. Stand <laughs> up. Um, any, any, any changes in the percentages? No, it's well, I, the, the residential has gone up slightly because we've raised the value as opposed to the commercial. And we've also had some commercial teardowns this year and conversions. You're talking, uh, which, dollar, you're talking dollar numbers, right, David? Yes. Yeah, okay. We're going to have uh, some more uh, lower values on the commercials next year. Uh, there's quite a few properties that are due for demolition, and most of them are um, commercials. I have never seen so much demolition going on in the last 30 years, as we're going to see this year. And the commercials will be replaced either by straightforward apartments or by mixed use. So again, the increase will be on the residential base next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we just don't have a we have don't have a commercial base. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. um, and then the fact of what happens if we split the tax rates, single tax rate, everybody gets the same uh, tax rate. Mm -hmm. If we use the factor less than one, which will be 0 0.937909, if we used it, it would shift the burden onto the uh, commercials by fifty percent. Uh, and verse, uh, completely the other way, if we raise the more than one, it would then impact the residential more than the commercial. So we, 
the chances of doing that are fairly negligible, I would think. Uh, and here's the impact of the split tax rate. And that's at a, a rate of 2046. Sorry, is what we were using. No, that's not right. Hold on. This is oh, what no. might change. Uh, we, we, no, what uh, we had planned in 2132. If we split the tax rate, it would go to 2046 and 3198. Okay. And that'll, that's going to change because, as I said, we're going to use 2127 instead of, uh, of 2132. So this so will have to be updated right now. Yeah, I think it's going to change about 1995, but it didn't change it yet this morning. Yeah. And so the residential would see a decrease, an average single family home would decrease of $534. And the commercial and industrial would see an increase of about 5600 on the average commercial property. So it's a, you know, 10 times the difference, if you will. And then that's just the piece about how many communities have the split rate and don't. Um, and that's why you do have the split rate. And all the exemptions we're going to mention here, the residential exemption, but we're not going to discuss it yet. Uh, the we will discuss the small commercial, which we don't have enough of. And... Uh, now, at that point, we're going to go into this presentation by Sean and I of the residential exemption, where I expect we're going to have most of the questions. And uh, does anyone disagree with that? Uh, so, this is this. This is the residential exemption study that Sean and I put together. Uh, We'll describe what it is, the study process, the data we have, and the key points and the next steps. I'm hoping Sean's there, but his, uh, they just had a baby on Saturday, so I don't know if he's going to be at the meeting or not. He's, he's going to want a break. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would think, yeah. Yeah, a week. I mean, a week. That's plenty of time. Good. <laughs> Ken, we're still old school. <laughs> So that this is what the residential exemption is and what the council must vote on it annually and the maximum they can do uh, and how many communities do it. And that's the study process. Those numbers are the 764 and the 376. They're approximate because we've had a few more filtering in since then, but we haven't uh, changed the numbers. So I'm just going to leave that for now. Um, and we'd mentioned that we're working with you guys because, uh, in fact, this is about as close as I've ever worked with the Board of Assessors on anything. Uh, and so it's been really good. And uh, I hope the new assessor is part of this so she can see what we're doing. Um, and these I, are the community. Why don't we get, do we have to go out and search for Zoom or will we get an invite from Teresa? Oh, no, you're going to get an invite. I've arranged okay. that. Thank you. Richard? Yes. I thought oh you you I thought you had a question. Well, I was gonna say uh, I suppose we might anticipate that that we're gonna get candidates for the council who might may have questions. That's what I'm expecting, yeah. Okay. And I, I suppose they'll be getting an invite as well, I would imagine. Um, I, I think this list of communities is extremely helpful because it really does give you an idea of sort of geographically and also if you know the cape um that that, that also helps uh, to understand that we're really quite distinguishable from the the list here yeah well, yeah so when, when, that... when dave when, when you explain and, and describe the communities will you also at the same time explain why that has an impact on the decision in other which words, decision? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, on why, if you have a large commercial base, it would in fact impact uh, how, how you're going to decide the exemption. Yeah, exemption. we can. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's why, a little bit more complicated than I want to get involved in, but that's all right. Yeah. I, I'd like questions drive you there, David. You think so? Yeah. It, it gets really complicated with split rates. A lot of these communities have split rates and therefore. 
I mean, I don't know. It's up to you, but I. No, I think you're right. Well, I would start digging on a hole because. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I prefer to respond to questions than I do to put it's, things out there. It gets yeah. really complicated. I mean, yeah. the thing that we're very familiar, I mean, like a lot of these have high rental properties or high rental um, number of rentals. Yes. And that's where we do fall in line with some of these. Yeah, yeah but we, as you say, we have absolutely not much in the commercial base. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, I just got done paying a week's rental on the Cape. And um, I have a sense that, um, that um, you know, the, a split rate there or a residential exemption there is operates to to drive up vacation rentals, which oh, yeah, they um, the do. which the community is very very eager to collect. So yes, yeah. Big well, time. that's basically how they came about. Uh, people were seeing their values driven up by people coming into town who were only living there three or four months of the year. Yeah, and so they they spread the tax burden a bit more effectively for them. But, so. On I mean, the pie probably, chart, you can see the number of, at the time, the non-owner occupied, as opposed to the owner occupied. Um, and that's a nice pink color this time, Ken. Yeah, that's better than black. <laughs> How do you know it's pink? How do you know it's pink? Sean told me. Oh. <laughs> uh, and there's the example of what will happen to the 15%. And others at the moment, we have a residential valuation of two points almost 2.4 billion. The total number of parcels, the average is that, and that's what 15% of that would be. Who checks the math on these on these tables? Whoever wants to, I did, I did the math. Okay. Uh, so the total amount of the valuation of the exemption would be that 244. So you subtract that from the uh, residential property value and it gives you 2.1 zero, whatever. And then that gives you the new tax rate of 23.95 within the residential tax rate. And for this particular study, we were using uh, 21.46 is what the, the um, residential tax rate would have been. So as you can see, it went up $2.49, or almost 10% actually, which is pretty damn close. Um, and this is just a breakdown of what would happen to them by the change in the tax bill of $1,000 or more reduction. And these first three lines are two lines are deduction, and then the increase for all the others over and above that. And we put down where the break even is. And at that point, I'll explain what the break even is. It's not self explanatory. Sometimes people get confused. And it'll give me a chance to talk about how the um, we only use the average value and everybody gets the same exemption. It's not 15% of the assessed valuation. It's 15% of the average value of assess, assess, you know, as you know. So that should be a good place, I, I would think, to uh, talk to them about that. And then there's just the key points um, that you're all familiar with. So unless there's a question, I'm not gonna go over those with you. Yeah. I guess the last bullet, David, I mean, I sort of say this policy will increase the resident, residential tax rate. So what? I mean, so what? It go, so what? It, I mean, you might think about adding, re-emphasizing, but will not increase total residential tax collected. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, we I mean, could tax, do that. I don't care what the tax rate is, how much money. <laughs> so you, you might expand that bullet just to say, but will not increase. Because a lot of people read that and think they'll collect more taxes. <laughs> and it's funny won't. you should say that because I was reading the newspaper this morning and it really sounded like on the, on the blog, at Nick's, or was a blog I was reading from Nick Gravy. And it's really almost saying like, if we raise the tax rate, we're raising taxes. You know, and, and you're quite right. People don't understand. So yeah. yeah, we should add something there just to let them know. Uh, I mean, but we'll not increase total residential taxes collected. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I'll, Sean. I'll, I think I'll good. see Sean tomorrow, so we'll change okay. it then. Okay. Any other questions there? That's a good point. So then there's just the um, 
key points. The assessor's office, we, we, for the first year, we definitely would need some additional resources just to get everything sorted out. What would a more robust mechanism look like? Basically, some sort of reporting system so people can let us know each year if they, if they um, are residential owner occupied or not. Uh, some sort of survey each year. I, I think after the first year, it would be limited to properties that sell during the year because we've got all the others already in place. But if you wanted to, I suppose you could send them to everybody, but it's an awful lot of work. Yeah, that, that's the hard thing, processing. I mean, most cities that have this have some kind of form that people have to fill out. Yeah. And um, then somebody's got to process it. So it does take time. And you're talking, it's not just like for like exemptions, there are people who only got a couple of hundred to be processed. You have seven, close to 6,300 you have to deal with. So it's a lot of entry each year. And basically then we're putting it on the council for them to consider what they're hope to achieve. The one thing I want to stress in there is that they'll have to do it you know, it's going to come back to them every year and doing it one year and then changing it the next year is, in my opinion, just not up and down. No. Um, and the recommendations from the town manager. And that's... Yeah, that's, that last page, David. Yes, sir. I don't know... Um, I was thinking maybe you can just say this verbally, but I think it needs to be real. I was thinking maybe adding a bullet, but maybe you can just say it verbally. I mean, somebody needs a stress here saying, Council, we need a vote by you by December 1st or whatever the date is. Well, I'm sort of hoping we get a vote from them by the, we've scheduled a follow up for October 18th. Okay, then October 18th. I'm concerned that some council people might read, say, if yes, public engagement. They're thinking they can do these public engagement sessions before they need to vote, and that's not true. Yeah, I think you're, yeah, get it after. Yeah, they got to vote by whatever date you want to put down there. But yeah, that's, that's, that too is a good point. We'll put that on there. Yeah. They, I, and I think I'll put it on as a bullet because I would probably forget. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I put it as the last bullet then. Council must take a vote by October, whatever. Yeah. So they don't. If yes, that's not really an option this year, the public engagement. No. Yeah. I mean, it's really okay. If you want a public engagement the next year, you should instruct people to do it. Yeah. But you can't do it this year. Well, it, it would have to be something that they were working on through the whole next calendar year, I would assume. That's yeah. right. With a lot of, I yeah. mean, that's where I reached it. I, the assessment office and whoever working on it, we reached the end of the road. You need a broader reach outreach in the community if you want to do anything more. Yeah, you do. You definitely have to get it out there. Yeah, and that takes takes time. A year, at least. So, and then we just throw it open to uh, questions, and I was going to just, I wasn't going to let them. Or ask, I was sorry. So I was going to ask them not to have questions after the first part and do it all at the end here for the classification and everything else. But we can just see what they do. So then you, you're going to you, flip. You're going to flip back now to the classification. Yeah, we can. Well, you've got a slide in there that calls for questions at the end of classification, right? They're they're required by law to hold a vote when. Yearly, at some particular time, before we set the tax rate. Okay. So it could be any time between now and Christmas, right? Oh, Christ, no, because we have to get the tax bill to it. December. The end, of, the end of November, the latest. End of November. Okay, thank you. Yeah. David, if you don't want questions on classification till the end, then maybe that slide should come out. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and maybe I'll put something there instead that says, could you hold it? We give it, wait until the end of presentation for questions, or the residential exemption presentation for questions, mm -hmm. and then we could do it all at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you have to see what the flow is going. 
I mean, if they're asking a lot of questions about the residential exemption, I think you need to let it flow. Yeah. Because you don't want to have them hold it and come back to that after you go through the rest of this. So would you suggest we do the residential exemption or the classification questions here and then do the residential yeah. exemption separately? Yes. Yeah, okay, I, then we'll I'm thinking about it. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right, then we'll just leave that on and that's what we'll yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter to us really because there's going to be the same questions no matter what happens. Yeah. yeah. You want to make sure this uh, the slides flow right. You don't want to, because I know how the slides get messed up sometimes. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to be going back and forth. I don't know what, you know, like this. Yeah, you're probably, you're all right. Then we could you want just to put them all here. right next to each other. What, otherwise, it doesn't work well at council. We well, should I don't know. Yeah, we're not at council. You're on Zoom, so it works better on Zoom. Yeah, I mean, it's all Teresa's fault. <laughs> no, not Teresa. Whoever's doing the slide. <laughs> Teresa shoulders. only did what I asked her. <laughs> it's our past years, it's been crazy who's been putting up slides. Well, we'll I'll try not crazy. to do that. So um, my question is, Is does the residential exemption usually accompany the split rate, a, a split rate? Oh, no. No. There's many, many the communities. Many communities have done the split rate and not done the community residential exemption. Okay. But how about, not, vice, how about vice versa, a residential exemption without a split rate? It's very, 12 out of 15 do have a split rate. Yeah. So the other way, they very likely have a split rate because they so, have a lot of commercial. So um, of that list of communities that we saw, there's only three that do it without a split rate? Yeah. Okay. You know, a lot of the cave doesn't have any res or doesn't have any commercial base either. Right. Mm -hmm. David, are you allocated time? I mean, are, so we're, we've got a time certain to start at six thirty, Lee. Uh huh. The the, but, the, but, vari the variable there is whether it's after public comment. If it's after public comment and there's something that's hot, um, you you have to wait for the public comment to get done. Yeah. Well, no, Lee, we don't have a designated. Amount of time, no. Okay. Do you remember how much that is? We don't have one. Okay. Well, hopefully we don't get pushed to the end of the agenda like last year. Uh, remember what to nine thirty? They flipped us. I'm trying to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do. I'll, I'll maybe I'll try and talk to Paul. So you could talk to Lennon so we could get it done right away. I mean, we were first on the agenda. I forget. Why was it we were pushed off to the end then? I'm trying to forget. Some woman, some council person had a question that we. Yes. She wanted to do it at the end or something. I don't know. Yeah. So I guess we can't help that if that's what happens. So that's the presentations. Um, I need to go back to the agenda now so we can see what I'm doing. I think we're done. I think not. I don't think there's anything else that we have. I don't. Well, just to update them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I will be in here early tomorrow morning. Kim is stopping in. Kim, Kim McDonald Muse is a new lady. She's the she's the assessor. Was the assessor in Greenfield? Uh, I think you, whoever was on the panel last time talked to her. Yes, we did. Yeah. And um, I only, I once I saw her, I knew who she was, but I can't, you know, know from where. Uh, but I think she's very personable. And I think after her and I talked about it, she's an under, better, much better understanding of the runnings of the office. I'm not sure about her, the, uh, her experience with um, commercial, but we'll see. As, as I remember, she was relatively new. She was. She was about four years in the job now. Right. But, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to let you know she will be here tomorrow morning at 8.30. And I'll talk with her. And um, maybe once she starts, we can set up a time when we can all meet in person. Sounds good. Over coffee. <laughs> you love your bloody coffee. <laughs> I forget whether we... I see Paul at Amherst Coffee almost every morning. And we, do, I forget whether we can actually have a meet without a uh, without an open meeting law problem. Uh, no, we'll, all right, we'll think about that. Okay. Maybe we'll post a meeting at the Black Sheep. 
<laughs> there you go. No reason why not. <laughs> Keep the black sheep still open. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad about Judy. Yeah. I think she I think Judy was ready to retire. Yeah, but it's, yeah. you think somebody will take over the restaurant and operate like it is? I hope so. Okay, yeah, we're, still, too. we're still being recorded. So let's uh do we have anything else to talk about? Um no. Okay. Um uh so David, do you think this is your last meeting? No, I'll probably be at the one in October at least. Okay, so uh, our next meeting, uh, did we agree on a date? I, I next meeting is the um October 14th, I think. I think we decided on October 14th. Is that is that going to work for the other two members? Um, I'm. What am I doing that day? Yeah, that's what I have. The fourteenth. Oh. Um, yeah, I guess that's gonna. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, um, if um, if somehow I don't show, um, it's because I'm uh, chauffeuring um, somebody back and forth to Boston. But I think if we meet at eleven on that Thursday, it's a Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll be okay. Okay. Uh, but um, um, the, uh, if the other two gentlemen are there, there'll be a quorum. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, all right. Well, okay. I'm sure Kim has probably better knowledge on how to use Zoom than I do. So, she may be the host, but I will be on the meeting. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. We look forward to that. And so, David, we thank you for your help. Yes. Thank you. And Teresa, thank you for these packages so organized. Oh, you're welcome. Whatever makes your life easier. It's, uh, it's a lot easier. It. It's really great. For you, so we really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I need to Eventually, we're going to meet in person, I guess, although maybe not this year. Um, um, I don't know about that. I think there's some discussion this Monday night at the, at the um, council. Tonight, actually, I think there's some discussion. I'm not sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Um, I move to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. David, Teresa, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you later. Have a good week. Yeah. You too. Bye.